sexual being welcome to the second class of this program and today we're going to be learning about sexuality in a diverse world but before we go into today's class i want to believe that you've gone through the first class which is the welcome session i want to believe that you've interacted and engaged with that content because what we're going to do throughout the course of this program is to build upon what we've learned the last time so if you've not listened to the first class you will find it difficult to engage with this class because we are building upon what we've learned the last class in the last class we learned about being a sexual being being a good sexual being why you need to be sexually intelligent and today we are learning about sexuality in a diverse world sexual diversity today we are learning about sexual diversity everything got created as a representation of sexuality i believe you will agree with me because in biology class we learned about how plants also reproduce sexually and asexually we learned about sexuality in plants in biology class even if that was not the definition but we, we, when we were in class then we were hearing uh, sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in plants and if you are someone that is also familiar with nature you know that there are some things you will see in nature and they kind of and uh, depict sexuality they kind of depict sexual organs and all that like if you are very very familiar with nature we see these things online we see them physically like you can just see let me see a tree and just looking at a tree you already know that ah 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 it's showing things it's giving sexual orgasm it's giving this it's giving that so everything got created as this this thing about sexuality so it is a sexual world it is a sexual word, which is not even bad in itself. Yeah, the word is a sexual word. It is not bad, but we need to be sexually sane. We need to be sexually sane because there are there is so many sexual insanity in the world. <laughs> Permit me to use that word, sexual ins insanity, because when you are doing things and you don't know what you are doing, what is that called? When you are doing things and you don't you don't have full knowledge of what you are doing, what is that called? When you are doing things and you do not even have basic understanding of what you are doing, what is that called? Obviously, sexual insanity. So to make this world a sexually sane world, we need to start knowing who we are sexually. We need to start opening up ourselves to the knowledge that will make us sexually intelligent. So once again, I celebrate you for being in this class. Not everybody can afford to sit here to learn about their sexuality. So you are a big deal. You are a big deal. You are my big deal. And I celebrate you because it is not easy. So you are welcome to this class. We're learning about sexual diversity. And to start, let me use this illustration. You will agree with me that everyone, everyone in the world has fingerprints everyone in the world we all have fingerprints everyone has fingerprints and it is so beautiful that no two person has the same fingerprints every one of us have different fingerprints like can you see how beautiful that is can you see how diverse that is it is also the same for sexuality Every one of us are sexual beings our sexuality is personal mine is personal to me yours is personal to you we are all sexual beings we all have sexuality but our sexuality is different our sexuality is what it is different just the same way our fingerprints are different no two persons have the same fingerprint not two persons so our, our sexuality is personal and not only is it personal it is diverse it is different it is different so you shouldn't look at someone else and say you are doing this you are not supposed to be doing this because it is not normal it can be normal in this person's world and not normal in your own world that does not mean you are wrong or you are right we need to learn to accommodate each other because it is in accommodation that we know that we can find unity in diversity 
that we can find unity in diversity, learn to accommodate. You do not discriminate someone's sexuality simply because it is different from yours. And when I go say discrimination, I'm never talking about LGBTQ yet. I'm not even there yet. I'm not. I'm not even talking about LGBTQ community yet. Because what sex means in a culture can be different from what sex means in my own culture. Even as a man and a woman, what sex means in someone else's culture maybe can be different. It's different from what sex means in my culture. So does that mean they are wrong and I'm right, or does that mean I'm wrong and they are right? No. We need to accommodate each other, learn from each other. And have a discourse. Have a discussion. Because sex is influenced by so many things. Sex, sex is influenced by so many things. Sex is defined by so many things. You, there, is no, there is no one size fits all to sexuality definition. There is no one size fits all to sex. Because we have different cultures in the world. We have thousands of cultures in the world and these different cultures have they also have a thing for sexuality. They have their own thing for sexuality. And believe me when I say it is not the same with what you believe sex should be. It is not the same with what you believe sex should be. So do we now say you are wrong, I'm right. I'm right, you are wrong. Or you are right, I'm wrong, and we can never accept that we are wrong. <laughs> because we always believe that what you know is the right thing. So, as sexual beings that want to thrive in sexual sanity, that want to thrive in sexual unity, we need to learn to accommodate other people. Accommodate people. Learn from their culture. Did I say, take in what they believe in? I No. But learn. You know what I'm saying? Don't be rigid. Be flexible. Because everyone has a right to what they believe in. Everyone has a right to their sex education. Everyone has a right that protects them in their own culture. So you need to respect each other's rights. And they need to demand that their, their rights should be respected. So you, you do not want to be rigid. Sexuality is personal and it is also what also diverse. I said that fact. There is nothing anybody can do about it because even in Nigeria we have lots and lots of cultures. So how much more different continents in the world? We have seven continents in the world, and those seven continents have within them there are different countries, and each country has have within them there are different tribes. Come on, that's too much. That's a lot. So we're going to be having lots and lots of sex differences, sex diversity. So it, it is not balanced for you to say you are different from me. You are right. You are wrong. I'm right. No. 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 Everyone has their rights. Everyone has sexual rights that is protecting them and what they believe in. So you need to respect people's rights. Respect their rights. And they also need to demand from you that their rights be respected. So that's for that about sexual diversity. So, and... Okay, like I was saying earlier before, I really related really about sexual diversity. I was talking about influences, things that influence sex. Because you yourself, what did that thing that you know about sex? It is something else that influenced it. It is something else that influenced it. There are people that the only thing they know about sex was actually what they saw on media. And media, I'm talking about the music they listen to, the movies they watch, what is happening on the internet and all that. That is the only thing that really, really covers what they know about sex. And media, we always do what media is supposed to do. If media wants to promote an agenda, it will promote that agenda. Because that agenda must agenda. <laughs> that agenda must agenda. And media is known for promoting agendas, even on LD agenda. It will surely do that. So if if what you've always known about sex is solely on what you've got from social media, then we need to really sit down together and be cross-checking, scrutinizing. Like, is this really right? Is it really correct? So there are lots and lots of things that, that influence sex. Lot of things that influence sex. Lot of things that define sex. I'm speaking about definition. I believe you know by now that sexuality is not about who you have sex with or how often you have sex. 
sexuality is about your sexual feeling your sexual thoughts your sexual behaviors towards other people i take that again sexuality is not about who you have sex with or how often you have sex sexuality is about your sexual feeling your sexual thoughts your sexual values your sexual behaviors towards other people and like i said earlier everyone has a right everyone has a sexual right and everyone should demand their sexual right from other people so you need to respect other people's sexual rights and not only respect they also need to demand that their rest that their rights should be respected now let's look at this scenario imagine you are in a room and in that room a male and a female are having sex and you are not you are not alone in that room in that same room you have yourself we also have a feminist we also have a pastor we also have a sociologist there is also a psychologist there is also a social learning therapist there is also a social biologist in that same room like six of you are all looking at this male and female having sex do you know that the six of you cannot be thinking about the same thing? Now it is left for you to decide what you see because the six of you are not saying the same thing. The six of you are not seeing the same thing. The sociobiologist is simply seeing two organisms exhibiting mating behaviors similar to other animal species. So they are seeing a man and a woman exhibiting mating behavior. A social, and a social biologist is like, okay, this is a man and a woman in mating behavior. Okay, I've seen this in other species. I've seen this in apes. I've seen this in monkeys. I've seen this in snakes. I've seen this in lions. I've seen this in tigers. Okay, so similar. And it is, it is the product of evolutionary behavior. You know, biologists and evolution. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, how does this relate to evolution behavior? Okay, what, what does the evolution theory have to affirm or negate regarding this behavior? And how does it lead to successful reproduction? You know, you cannot say, but you cannot see biology without reproduction. Every biologist, like, is as if reproduction is always, okay, yeah, reproduction, because that species must not go into existence. Yeah, existence, right? Existence, existence. Yeah, because that species must not go into existence. Part of my English. <laughs> yeah, it must not go into a system. Yeah, so every social biology. So a social biology that is seeing a man and a woman having sex is saying, okay, I've seen this behavior in other mates, in other species. Okay. How does this behavior relate to the evolution theory? And how does this behavior lead to successful reproduction? So that this species doesn't go into extinction. That is a social biologist. When you bring in a feminist, a feminist will say, okay, a male and a female are having sex, but this woman is not opening up. Are you sure she's she consented to this? Are you, are you sure her consent is approved? Are you, are you sure she said yes and that yes was affirmative? Can you confirm that she said yes? Or another thing the feminist can say is, mm -mm, this man is too dominant. What is, what is this problem? Allow the woman to, to express herself with what you are doing. You are making this woman sexually to be repressed. Let her express herself. That is what a, sex, a feminist will be thinking and so many other things. When you bring in a pastor to give his own take, a pastor will say, a male and a female, right? Yes. Are they married? Yes. Okay. They are not married. No. That is a sin. They are not married. They shouldn't be having sex. Why should they be having sex when they are not married? Okay, they are married. Okay, that's fine. They are married. Okay, fine. Are they using sex toys? Why should they be, should they be using sex toys? They are married. Why should married couple be using? That is not according to the will of the Lord. Or oh, another thing the pastor always says. Are they married? Yes. They are married. This sex, this sex position is a sin. <laughs> this sex position is a sin. No, it is not permitted in the kingdom. <laughs> Okay, why a psychologist? <laughs> I believe you are enjoying this class as much as I am. <laughs> why a psychologist will see two people meeting and will be like, okay, sexual energy. I'm seeing, I'm seeing sexual energy. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the libido. Mm, I'm seeing that when the guy sucks the girl's breast, she's responsive. 
I'm seeing that our sexual energy increased. That means the breast is an erogenous zone. That's beautiful. Oh, I see that when they're performing for last year and cunning legals, I can see that okay, the their sexual energy is increased. Okay, so you are so I can see that the vagina and the penis they are erogenous zone. Okay, the nibbling of the neck. Mm, the woman is responding well. Okay, so that means the neck is also an erogenous zone. Wow. Like the psychologist is seeing them, but is also thinking about different things. So I've mentioned three people now, seeing them. Thinking about different things. They are not seeing the same thing. But a man and a woman is having sex. But these three people are not seeing the same thing. Why? A sociologist will see a man and a woman having sex and be like, Hmm, okay, they are having sex. As a sociologist, is this approved by the law? Because according to sociologists, when it comes to sex, it is, it is sex is influenced by religion, by economy, by family, by medicine, by law. A sociologist will say, Hmm, does this man have a job? If this thing leaves a baby, what can it do? Is it, is it economically capable <laughs> of providing for a family? If it can't, why should it be having sex? No, like, just, I'm just giving a hair. I'm just trying to just allow you to understand that when it comes to social, when a sociologist wants to give his own talk, he's going to talk about medicine, he's going to talk about economy, he's going to talk about law, he's going to talk about religion, and he's going to talk about the family. In medicine, he may say, hmm, like, there are different things a sociologist will say and another person can just say, okay a social a social learning therapist can come and say oh 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 this sexual activity is scripted like it can be any other way you can it, you don't have to start with kissing because everybody believes that when you want to have sex you start with kissing to foreplay after everything everything then you now end with its intercourse then after intercourse you will now sleep so a social learning therapist can just say, oh, no, 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 no. You can do things other way. You can just decide to just kiss and sleep and not even necessarily engage in intercourse. This, this, what they are doing is scripted. The society has made you believe that you should follow the script, follow the script. But no, you can, you can negate it. You can change the curriculum and all that. That is, so we have different people seeing a male and a female having sex and they are seeing the different things now you as a person what are you seeing what can you see and you can never afford to be mentally lazy i want to believe that what has been listed here has in one way or the other influence your sexual activity and you actually do not wait till when you finally start having sex what you believe in will definitely impact on your sexual activity so if you've always believed in any one of these are you sure are you sure that what you've always believed in is right are you sure that what you've always believed in is the right thing for you that is why it's very very important for you to know yourself your sexuality is personal every other person can be saying different things and even if you agree with what they are saying you want to bring it home you want to be sure that you agree and if you are married you want to be sure that your spouses agree that is why you need to know your sexual values and be sure that your your sexual value and your spouse's sexual value align because if both of your sexual values do not align you will struggle sexually in marriage you will struggle sex so sex is not just about penis entry vagina there is so much more the things that we will determine the effectiveness of the, of the penis entry the vagina well and making the woman reach orgasm you are not even discussing about it you don't even know anything about it so before penis entry vagina, there are things you should have settled. What influenced your sexual? Are you coming to tell you that this one is the right one, this one is the wrong one? No, you will not be mentally lazy, my friend. No, you will do that work yourself because it is your sexuality and it is personal to you. So you will do that work yourself. I've given you different things. I've given you how culture affects the people's sexuality. I've told you how diverse the world is. And how you do not need to shame someone or shoot someone away because they have different sexuality. There's there's a society called I need speech. In that in that society, they are sexually repressive. They are so naive and they don't and so naive and sexually repressive. They don't even know that a man is supposed to suck his woman's breast. Like the only thing they just know is the woman should just lay down there, not respond and all that. And the woman will do whatsoever it is he wants to do and just get up when when he's done. Like in this 21st century yes yes there's a society like that so sexually repressive now imagine someone from our society now coming to a sex that is sexually um sexually expressive just like mangaya 
in Magaya, there are men, there are boys start engaging in sexual activity from seven years and it is normal in their society. They teach their boy how their boys how to hold themselves, how to hold themselves so that they'll be able to please a woman continuously before he, he before he himself ejaculates. Now we are about one minute men. I'm very very sure that we don't have one minute men in Mangaya because they, they intentionally train it is it is a norm in their society to intentionally train their men. And we also have society, we also have a society whereby they train their men, growing up, they train their men to hate women, yes, hate women, engage in homosexuality. Then when they now get to a certain age, they now teach them, oh, you're going to marry a woman. Like, can you imagine? You already told these people to hate, to hate women and introduce them to homosexuality. Then when they now get to a certain age, you now tell them that, okay, marry a woman, and this is how to please a woman and all that. So, different things happen in different societies and different laws protect people in different societies now when someone's from iris a woman in iris being does not even know what orgasm means but a woman in mangaya oh like is a norm to her reaching orgasm is something she does on a norm on a norm so can you see how diverse the world is sexually can you now see that it is going to be very very unintelligent for you to say your society is this no no now <laughs> no no that is why you personally you need to know yourself sexually you need to know your sexual values you know you need to know what you are holding on to and what you are letting go now do we not say ah your society is sexually repressive you are not my friend no no they have a right to what they believe in and as a human being you need to respect that right because they will demand that right from you. Or oh, you see a man from Mankaya like, oh, you, that you've been having sex since when you were seven. That you've been doing this, doing that. No, I cannot relate with you. That is their society. And it is expedient of you to give them that right. Like, respect their right. Because they will demand that right. And they have laws protecting them. They have laws protecting them. And even with the diversity, every every culture, every tribe regulates sex. There are some things that are not normal. We have society that homosexuality is normal. And that's why that homosexuality is you you go to you go to prison if you engage in it. So that's why the diversity. That's why the diversity. Every every tribe regulates sex. There is a regulation around sex. And it is it is significant to them. It is significant. So you, you want to bring it down to yourself. What do you believe in? What kind of society are you in? What religion are you practicing? You want to bring it to yourself. And who do you believe? How do you believe sexuality to be? What does elder sexuality mean to you? What does a sexually sane person mean to you? Draw, write it down and draw out your sexual values. Draw out what you're going to be passed. What you're going to pass to your own generation. Because sexuality is personal and it is diverse. I've said so many things. I said so many interesting things. I said so many enlightening things in this class. Once again, if you know there is a friend somewhere that needs to be here, invite them. Bring them closer. Draw them closer. So we've come to the end of the second class. It's getting hot. <laughs> it's getting hot. It's getting wider. It's getting everything it's supposed to get. <laughs> so yeah, I've come to the end of today's class. If you have a question, you can write to me on orgasm reform institute at gmail.com or follow us on our social media handles orgasm reform institute is going to bring it out till i meet you in our next class till i see you again in our next class it is going to be very very interesting like we are climbing yesterday was up today was utter tomorrow will be another fire another one thousand another nation so we keep going till we get this year 2024 you will not grieve for any country that will allow you to engage in unhealthy sexual activity because because you will learn you will, i can't wait to see you again in the next class